Well, good morning, friends. Welcome to Mid Morning Manna. Lonnie Madigan here in our home office. Glad you tuned in today. And uh, I just want to remind you that on Monday, we talked about how the Apostle Paul, he was talking about, he said, I am. I am what? He said, I am not guilty of bloody hands. And he was talking about how he was not the guilty of not telling people about Christ so that they could be saved. And we talked about that on Monday. Number two, we talked about on Tuesday, he said, I'm ready to suffer and die for Jesus if that's what it takes. And he was not running from the opposition. He was running to the opposition, trying to get them on board, trying to get them saved, trying to tell them about Jesus Christ. And then he said on Wednesday, he said, I am a man of credentials. I'm a man of credentials. Now, previously he had said, oh, wretched man that I am. A few weeks back when I talked about Paul, he talked about himself being a wretched man. He gave a, he, during that week, he talked about several things where he was a failure. I, I think I titled it something like, you think Paul was a hero? You might want to think again when you hear what he had to say about himself. But he said, oh, wretched man that I am. He called himself a wretched man. So he's, but now he's saying here, I'm a man of credentials. Not by by his own worthiness, but because of who he had teamed up with, who he had partnered with. You say, well, who did he partner with? He partnered with Jesus Christ. He believed on Jesus. He received him. He quit persecuting the Christians and began trying to win people to Christ. God turned his life around. And so now he says, I, no longer am I that wretched man that was out trying to persecute, prosecute, and even put to death Christians. Now I'm in the business of trying to win Christians to Christ and get, I don't want to have bloody hands. So I'm going to tell everybody I can and hope to meet them all in heaven one day. Now, on this day, number four, he said, I am a man under accusation. He said, I am accused. I'm a man of under accusation. In Acts chapter 26, don't have time to read this whole chapter, but if you go back and read this chapter uh, and even the previous chapter, you'll see where Paul had been taken and, and now he's on trial and they've brought in King Agrippa, who was one of the mighty leaders from Rome. And he brought, they brought Agrippa in and King uh, the, Agrippa said unto Paul, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. He gave the, he heard all the accusations from Paul's enemies. And then I, I'm glad he was a, a, an honest man and a fair man because he said, okay, Paul, let's hear your side of the story. Now, by the way, if someone asked you to tell your side of the story, would you know what to say? If someone said, well, how do you know you're going to heaven? How do you know your sins are forgiven? What would you tell them? How, how would you explain that to them? You couldn't say, well, I just think it's, I just think I would. I just believe I would. I just, that's the way I feel. I've just tried to do the right thing on and on. You could make all that kind of argument, but that's not the answer. And that's not what they're looking for. And that's not what they need. And it could be that you don't have what you need. And if you, if you can't go any further than that. So let's, let's, Paul said, Paul said, uh, Paul, he said, thou art permitted to speak for thyself, Agrippa did. And Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. He said, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. You see, Paul said, I don't really have anything to be ashamed of. I'm not, I haven't hurt anybody. I haven't, since I've trusted Christ and now I'm living for him and trying to persuade folks to go the way of Christ and receive him. He said, I, I don't have anything to be embarrassed about. I can tell you why, wide open. I can lay it out here. Here's where I've been. Here's what I've done. I've planted churches. I've preached the gospel. I've written epistles, letters to the churches to encourage them and to bless them. And he said, he said, I, I know that I'm accused. I, I know that. He said, I am accused of the Jews. He was a man under accusation. By the way, once you become a Christian, once you're living for God, there's going to be people that don't like you because they are under conviction and they feel like you think you're better than them. They don't know you. You need to let them know who you really are and uh, then share with them the gospel and hope that they will also come to Christ. And we ought to love people. We ought to do what we can, well, not go along to get along, but we ought to get along as best we can, loving people, trying to be agreeable, trying to be helpful, trying to be a blessing, trying to be an encouragement and allow God use that to open some doors. Like It's like Daniel of old 
and Jesus Christ. The only thing that, that they could bring against him were falsehoods that were twisted. That's all they could bring against Paul. They, they had to make it up. <laughs> they, they didn't have any true facts of him causing problems for the nation of Rome or undermining the civil government or even being an enemy to the Jews. Paul was a Jew. He was raised in, in the Jewish culture. And yet when he got saved, God changed his life. I don't know what culture you were raised in, but I can tell you this, doesn't matter what your culture you were raised in. If you were under some other religious tenet, or if you were raised as an, in an atheist home, or a gambling, drinking, doping situation, you don't have to live that way. You can be saved. You can be born again. You can get your life turned around. Contact me. Let us help you. We can make a difference. My goodness, we have so many good programs from all the way from the nursery and from, from the cradle to the grave. We have programs through the church that can help you get your life turned around and, and account for Christ. And you can have the joy of the Lord in your life. And I'm getting off, off subject here. But listen what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so prosecuted they the prophets which were before you. You see, this, this is not something unusual. Something's happening to you that hadn't happened to everybody else. Anybody that's going out and out for God, there's going to be some opposition along the way. But you know what? You need to learn to just smile. He said, when, when Agrippa said, how are you doing, Paul? He said, I'm happy. I'm happy, Agrippa. I, I'm heaven bound with the hammer down. I know I'm saved. I know I have a home in heaven one day when I die. If I die now or if I die later, I'm going to meet Jesus. And so he wasn't uh, under oppression. He wasn't under depression. He, he wasn't discouraged. He had a positive outlook because he had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I trust that you will too. They all sure you're going to face accusations. We all face accusations. I've had accusations. That's and listen, if you let that stop you, then you didn't have anything to begin with. My friend, we don't need to get under the circumstances. We need to get on, we need to get on top of the situation and say, by the grace of God, I'm going to go ahead and do my best to do what I know God told me to do and be what God asked me to be. And I'm going to leave that in his hand. The outcome will be his. And he's the one that's laying up the rewards in heaven. I'm just going to serve him. I'm going to honor him. I'm going to put him first. Paul said, I'm, I'm being accused, but I'm just going to keep on keeping on. Let me give you a scripture reference. If you want to jot it down, you can, and then you can go read it. I don't have time to read it here on the broadcast today. But in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. First Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Write that down. Look it up in your Bible. Read it five verses, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Six verses, excuse me. Six verses. Read them. It won't take long. And think about them. Let God speak to your heart through his word. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the folks that tune in on a regular basis. I thank you for the brand new listeners that are there today. I pray, Father, that you help us to be what you want us to be. Forgive our weaknesses. Forget our fe forgive our fears. Help us, Lord, to have your strength in our life. And Father, give us the boldness that we need to be the witness you want us to be. And Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.